Tomorrow, House Democrats will introduce a resolution to block Donald Trump's national emergency at the southern border that he declared to, to pay for his wall. In a letter, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi wrote the president's decision to go outside the bounds of the law to try to get what he failed to achieve in the constitutional legislative process violates the Constitution and must be terminated. Sixteen states have joined together in a lawsuit filed by the attorneys general of those states that claims President Trump's emergency declaration to build a wall is unconstitutional. And now the county, the county of El Paso, Texas, has filed a similar lawsuit with the most high-powered legal team that has joined this fight. Harvard Law School's constitutional law professor Lawrence Tribe is co-counsel on the El Paso County case, along with Stuart Gerson, a former assistant attorney general in the Republican administration of President George H.W. Bush. And we are now lucky to have them both here tonight to discuss this new lawsuit. And Professor Tribe, uh, what is different about your lawsuit compared to the attorney's general lawsuit? Well, our lawsuit really is focused on El Paso, which is ground zero of the president's attack on the rule of law and the Constitution. We're making arguments that are, to some extent, similar. We're arguing that the power of the purse belongs to Congress, that the president's invocation of the National Emergency Act is completely bogus. There was no emergency, as he said himself. He didn't need to do this. And more than that, and perhaps in greater detail than any of the other suits, we are pointing to all of the laws that the president claims are triggered by the emergency and showing that none of them authorize what he plans to do to a town like El Paso, where 800,000 people are living peaceful lives and do not need to have their lives disrupted by a president who claims that it's going to be a center of criminality unless he gets to build a massive wall to protect it. Uh, Stuart Gerson, are, uh, does your lawsuit claim particular damage to El Paso County? Well, the question that El Paso County first faces is one of standing and ripeness. And as uh, Professor Tribe pointed out, this affects the county directly and immediately because the county has got to plan for things like eminent domain, uh, shifts in, in, in policy, uh, the building of this uh, uh, bogus wall. Uh, and so uh, there's a, a direct focus on the county and the, and, the needs of the, and the needs of the county. It's an excellent plaintiff. Now, uh, we all remember in the Rose Garden, the president predicted that there would be a lawsuit or lawsuits, uh, but he was very specific about where they would be, uh, that they would be in California or uh, in a jurisdiction uh, that would allow them to be appealed to the Ninth Circuit, which the president thinks is the most liberal uh, appeals uh, circuit in the country. And Professor Tribe, uh, you're not going to be in the Ninth Circuit. Are you in a, a more challenging and difficult uh, appeal environment if you're appealing in uh, what I think is the Fifth Circuit? It's the Fifth Circuit, and we are suing in the Western District of Texas. Um, but we don't think that this is a situation where liberal has to face off against conservative. The values of the U.S. Constitution, the values that say that the president cannot simply ask Congress for money and when Congress refuses to give it to him, grab it himself. Those values should be values that count for every bit as much in the Fifth Circuit as the Ninth and indeed in the U.S. Supreme Court. So we are not forum shopping. We are bringing the lawsuit where the damage is experienced and we expect to have a serious chance to win because we think we are completely right. And the very fact that Stuart Gerson and I are on the same side here, even though we are ideologically in very different places on most issues, I think nicely illustrates that the Constitution at this level is not a partisan document. Let's listen to something the President uh, said in the Rose Garden that will appear in all of these lawsuits. I want to do it faster. I could do the wall over a longer period of time. I didn't need to do this, but I'd rather do it much faster. Uh, Stuart Gerson, uh President Eisenhower wanted to build the interstate highway system faster than we did, uh, but they built it when they could, as fast as they could. You could say that about an awful lot of federal building projects. We'd like to build it faster. 
Well, the president has no engine, Charlie Wilson, uh, to help him. But that uh, that that aside, uh, uh, the president, in a sense, is whipsawing himself. In, in, in one uh, sense, he's saying, well, this thing is going faster. I want to do it immediately. Uh, that buttresses the uh, standing and ripeness of the matter for El Paso County uh, and its uh, and its co-plaintiffs. Uh, on the other hand, uh, he's also suggesting the, the bogus nature of this uh, emergency. I, I want to uh, just hearken to something that, uh, that Larry Tribe just said. Uh, we're not unhappy in the Fifth Circuit. Sure, there are plenty of conservative uh, judges that are sitting. But the position that we're arguing constitutionally is a fundamentally conservative one. As I suggested to uh, uh, Professor Tribe this afternoon, I'd, ex I'd expect James Madison and Alexander Hamilton to be on our side if they, if they were around today. This strikes at the heart of what the framers were attempting to do, which was to prevent the concentration of power and uh, a, a, a turn towards the tyranny that was rejected by the American Revolution. This is a fundamentally conservative position. It strikes at the heart of separation of powers. There has to be some limit on the power of the executive. An emergency is something that the branches don't have time to consult about. This hardly is the case, and the president's comment that you just quoted makes that very clear. Uh, Professor Tribe, in your long experience uh, at the law, in so many very important cases, and cases that uh, you've taken to the United States Supreme Court, uh, have you ever been on the opposite side of a litigant who was so helpful to your case in public comments that you could then simply type right into your brief to support your position? Honestly, I have never had an opponent who was quite as helpful. And I <laughs> find it odd to say uh, thank you, Mr. Trump. but. I really think that we do need to thank him for being as obvious as he is about the absence of any emergency and about the fact that he is simply trying to do what emperors and kings do, not what a president of the United States should do. And I very much agree with Stuart Gerson that the framers would roll over in their graves if they saw this as the result of their handiwork. This is not what any of them would have imagined. The unlikely legal team of Lawrence Tribe and Stuart Gerson brought together by Donald Trump. Thank you both very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.